Hi guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and we've got a knife for you today. A knife that I've been waiting for for a long time. It was actually the first knife of mine in uh, 2015 that CBSA took away from me. Not the first knife they took away from me, but the first knife that year. You know, that's how long ago I tried to get this knife. I tried to get it way back in 2015. And yeah, CBSA said it was a dangerous weapon. Ho oh, ho! With centrifugal deployment. Oh, dangerous knife, I tell ya. Just take a look at that beast. Imagine. I know, it's crazy. A thumb stud deployment, liner lock, G10 handle scales, 8CR13 MOV steel, drop point with a swedge, saber grind, which is a flat grind, uh, right side tip up pocket clip, uh, only right side. There's no uh, skeletonization on the liners anywhere. Um, I think I said G10. The big brother is this guy right here. You can get the big brother in G10 or wood. Um, I've had four or five of these. I've given some of them away. I use this thing with my leather pouch. I've got a separate video about that that I just told you about on uh, Monday's unboxing video. And, um, you know, it's a very similar knife, except for this guy's a flipper, very clearly. But the rest of it is very similar. We've got a traditional swedge here, and on this one we've got a cutout section on the top of the blade. But other than that, it's very much the same. You know, you've got your thumb riser coming up a little bit right there, and then it's notched down, drop point, same thing up here. High, well, not a high saber, saber grind, saber grind, exactly the same shape handle scales. Um, you know, this one's got jipping on the liners, very thick liners. This one does not. A couple of differences. This one's got a thumb stud. This one's a flipper. They're both 8CR13, and they're both, uh, this guy's got a proprietary pivot screw. This guy's got Torx, and, uh, you know, somewhat similar. And uh, you should see my video on this guy, I really love this knife an awful lot. It's something, it's only something about the styling and how it feels in the hand. Uh, the deployment isn't that great on any of them that I have. You have to do a little bit of wrist to get them to flip out nice. It's just washers, one nylon, one phosphor bronze, same thing on here. You know, nothing super special, but something about that shape just got me. And I really, really like the looks of this knife. I really would like it if somebody took this knife or if Enland took this knife and notched it up a few degrees. Uh, put in, you know, even a VG10 steel. You know, it doesn't have to be stupid, crazy premium. Just a nice steel. And, uh, you know, did a carbon fiber handle scales. Um, this one's skeletonized, which is nice in the liner uh, because the liners are fairly thick. And didn't use pr pr proprietary. You know, I would really love that an awful lot. And this one could get that same kind of treatment, and I would be quite enamored with it. I very much like both of these guys, but we're talking about the EM01. If you're interested in the full review of the EM01, and even if you're not, <laughs> stick around and watch what I've got to say about this thing. It flips very well. And I've not had to lubricate it or anything. And that is with the one white nylon washer and the one phosphor bronze washer. With my left hand, I'm not quite in the flipping mode. Um, <laughs> just a few little things for reasons why, but uh, it's a little hard to get this thing. I don't know why, but there you go. I got to flip with my left hand there. And again, um, I'm just going to take a little bit of muscle memory to get flipping with this thing in the left hand really well, but I, I can get there. The pocket clip is one side only, so right side tip up. My hands are large, bordering on extra large uh, in North American sizes. That's between 10 and 11 in European sizes. I can get this index finger in there, and my hand comes around, and you can just see the end of the knife right there. Put my thumb up here, or come back a little bit, re-grab it and do a three finger hold like this, pinky off on the end. And then I can put my thumb up here. You've got a bit of a thumb riser right there. And it's flat, no jimping on it. And thumb rests on there very well. Do a lot of good delicate work there. 
We've got a nice little sharpener's toil there, made it easy to sharpen this knife. I didn't have to take off the thumb stud to sharpen it easily. Thumb stud is placed back far enough that uh, it stays out of the way. You get lots of access room right there to uh, flick the knife out. Not quite as much on the left side. You, you don't have the uh, choil cut out quite as far to start with. And, but, but the thumb stud's not in the way. You know, it's uh, flippable out of the left side without many problems. Thumb stud's far enough back this way so that when you're slicing through things, it's not going to get caught. Well, it can, but not very easily. Uh, nice, even grind all the way up there. I've sharpened this myself on my uh, TS Prof sharpening system. Uh, it gives a good cutting edge to it. Uh, here's my one inch wide banding, and uh, it just flies through there very, very easily. That was a very a low effort kind of cut there. I didn't put much pressure on it at all. Uh, let's do this. Let's do some paracord. Four strand paracord. It just zips right through it. I feel it looks like I did a really tight grip, but I didn't really have to. It just sort of flies right out. Cutting with the tip, it slides right through. I can just sort of press down a rock and it cuts right through. Cuts really, really well. Or I can slice, of course. This is a, you know, 8CR13 MOB is not a bad steel at all to uh, uh, have a knife made out of. I like my budget steels with 8CR13 and Land's been in the business for quite a while and they make good knives. And this one is a good knife. Uh, let's show you how well it cuts paper. You can hear how cleanly that's cutting. Let's see how it looks when it's in the pocket. You get a fair bit of knife sticking out of your pocket there. That's, it's certainly great for grabbing on and pulling out, but you've got almost an inch, you know, just under two centimeters sticking out there, about three quarters of an inch. Easy to grab and pull out and uh, use, but I would like if they would have done, you know, something to move this pocket clip further up to the corner. That would have been a, up to the corner, to the end of the handle. This nice little lanyard hole is a good thing, but I'm sure if they could have uh, taken this pillar and integrated one of the three, probably that third pin with the pocket clip along with that pillar screw, they could have got the pocket clip up higher and uh, they would have made a very much nicer pocket clip. That being said, the EL01 has a pocket clip that's identical to this except for larger. So they tried to keep that theme going. I would have really liked an, uh, a flipped over pocket clip. You know, a pocket clip that's something like this that comes over and around. Uh, that would have been really nice to have on here because uh, I really like this knife an awful lot. The open pillar construction's nice. I'll show you a close up picture of the hourglass shaped pillars. There's three of them back there. And the stop pin is not screwed in. It's just uh, set in place there. So three screws and then your pivot. What I really like is almost everything is this flush screw work. So you see these screws back here on the open pillars. Those are flush with the G10. Uh, the uh, pivot here, it's just very slightly raised. But then on this side, this screw is a big old screw. I wish they would have done something a little bit more like the rest of the screws and done something a little flatter. That's a very minor thing. That's being super nitpicky. At least they didn't mess up any of the threads on any of these screws. So that's a good thing. Not the threads. Well, the threads are good, but I mean the, uh, the screw head. They didn't mess up the screw head on there. That thumb stud looks good. It's got a little bit of a design in it and a little bit of a, you know, line cut out there. You can see how well everything lines up. No blade play, side to side, up and down. Lockup is a little later than I like a brand new knife to be, but it's not bad. This knife is still gonna last a number of years. Actually, if I look closely, yeah, the center of the lock arm is not at the center of the blade yet. So there's still room for the, the, the knife to wear over, uh, the liner lock to wear over and give it some more life. It's okay. I'm not going to take this knife apart for you to see the insides. There's a, um, 
a white nylon washer on this side of the blade and a phosphor bronze washer on this side of the blade. I just like this blade shape. That's what really, really gets me. Well, not just the blade shape. I really like the blade shape. It's simple. It's clean. It's well designed. Um, check out that mirror edge on there. <laughs> it's so easy to get a mirror edge on a knife with that TS Prof system. And especially when you've got arthritis, bad arth, well, it's not bad. My arthritis is just mild so far, but it's going to get bad. And I've got arthritis in this hand, a little bit in the right hand as well. And so when I clamp this system on in my TS Prof, I can just, you know, rest my hand and I can use the other hand to do all the work. It's not a system where you need two hands, like the Lansky, where you got to hold on and then do the work. So many other systems are two hand as well. Um, it's one of the main things that I really like about the TS Prof. Um, and yes, I am still working on the full review. They're sending me some more optional pieces. And once I get those optional pieces, I'm going to do the full review showing those as well, just in case you want to get those optional pieces. Really nice knife. I like this an awful lot. The uh, milled in lines on the G10 right here, that helped give it some character. It also, you know, is a little better for grip. You wrap your fingers around there and the, the pads of your finger fit in there in the meat of it. Really nice. Uh, you can grip this knife any way you want. It's quite comfortable in this kind of reverse grip. Uh, regular grip, thumb out, thumb over. Um, you can do the back grip with the blade forward, the blade back, doesn't really matter. Um, you can do this pinch grip that works really, really well. You get your three fingers back here and your index and your thumb right there. You can do really good delicate work and it doesn't get hot in the hand. It just goes really, really well. I like this knife an awful lot. Um, it just uh, works as a, um, a good EDC kind of knife. It um, cuts well, looks good, um, feels good in hand. Takes an edge quite well, keeps an edge quite well. And it's so easy to do really delicate little cuts like that. Put these a whole bunch of these tiny little curls. You've got a lot of control for a small knife. If you live somewhere where you need a less than three inch blade for your EDC and a locking knife is a you know something you can have, I would suggest that you consider this thing. It's on uh, a flash sale till the end of October 2017. Uh, the prices of this thing, it's um, $9.62 Canadian, plus about two, two bucks shipping. U.S., it's $7.69, plus a buck 64. Euros, it's $6.54, uh, plus just under two. And in uh, pounds, it's $5.88, plus $1.25. Uh, no, in euros, the shipping is $1.39. It's a good little knife. Uh, let's talk about the sizes of everything for you. Uh, we've got a cutting edge of 6.94 centimeters, which is 2.73 inches. Blade length is 6.98 centimeters. That's two and three quarter inches. The blade thickness is 2.44 centimeters. No way, millimeters. And that's 0 0.096 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.55 millimeters, which is 0 0.022 inches. That's a good thickness behind the grind to do a lot of hard work. I wouldn't mind if it was 0.45 instead of 0.55 millimeters thick right behind the grind, but 0.55 is reasonable as well. The handle length is 9.2 centimeters, 3.63 inches. Uh, the grip area back here, starting at the uh, this choil, till the end of the handle here is 7.8 centimeters, three inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.13 centimeters, which is 0.44 inches. And the whole thing is 16 centimeters long, which is 6.3 inches. It weighs 75 grams, which is only 2.6 ounces. So you've seen how I like it. You've seen what you can do with it. I like the grip. I like the cut. I like the blade shape. I like the flat grind here. Um, the only thing that I have the slightest kind of beef with is the pocket clip. I'd like a little deeper carry. And if they were to do a refining of this uh, 
knife to do like a generation two of it. I wouldn't mind having some, uh, you know, steel ball bearings in there and a nice deep carry pocket clip that you can do right and left, maybe even four way, but at least right and left and, you know, keep the rest of everything. Maybe make a small flipper as well instead of just the thumb studs. So Enlan, if you're listening, you know, those are some really good ideas. Not just making the big brother flipper, make the small brother a flipper as well. Uh, and maybe let people have the choice between the two. Uh, do this in wood as well as the G10. Skeletonize it a little bit just to make it a little bit lighter. There's a lot of guys that want knives really light. But at 2.6 ounces, this is not a bad knife at all. So uh, there you go. If you like the video, even if you don't want the knife, please click on the thumbs up. Please share this video with somebody. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.